Hey guys, and welcome to the beginning of an ongoing beginner-friendly series on subdivision hard surface modelling in Blender. As many of you may be aware, I have the Master Chief and Space Marine helmet modelling series, uh, however, they're not very beginner-friendly, unfortunately. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good idea to create a series targeted at beginners that are wanting to learn subdivision hard surface modelling in Blender. The idea of this series is to start out with simple models and gradually work your way up to more complex designs so that we can tackle more advanced concepts and topology later down the track and build your skills up over time. So with that out of the way, I wanted to start this series out with just a little suggestion that came through from A's before over in the Discord server uh, of how to model this object here. Now I can understand to somebody new to all this, uh, this might look a little bit daunting because it's a cylindrical object with a rounded bevel on it uh, and then throwing in a subdivision surface modifier on top of that just seems like a nightmare. Uh, but I promise it's not that bad, I'll guide you through uh, quite simply how to do this. Uh, so I'm just going to push this away onto my other screen and the um, they will be in the resources section of my Discord server. So let's just go ahead, select everything and delete it. I'm just going to bring in a, a cylinder, and we're fine to leave the vertices at 32. It actually works quite nicely for this. And we're just going to go G, Z, and 1 just to bring this up to the floor plane. And tapping into edit mode here, I'm just going to select this top face, and I'm just going to bring it down on the Z a bit. Just about that much. Just keep in mind I'm only eyeballing all of this myself, uh, just based off of the same reference images that you have access to. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's press 7 to go into a top-down view and using K here for our knife tool I'm just going to go to the leftmost uh, vertice, or vertex sorry, you can also do it from the right either or. Click down on that, press C and just come across. I'm also going to press Z to make it cut through the mesh then just right click again, hit enter You'll see that's made a cut through. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. K for the knife tool. Click at the top here. C for a straight cut. Z to cut through the mesh. Down there. And it's all good. So having done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and... Uh, sorry, I did that a bit quick. I just pressed Z and went into wireframe view from the Pi menu here. Uh, once we're in here, I'm just going to right click, drag. And select, sorry, left click and drag, my bad, uh, and select all of these and just go ahead and delete the faces because we will only need to work with a quarter of the model uh, and if we come over to our modifiers tab here we can search for a mirror modifier and do the X and Y axes to make a complete cylinder again uh, and enable clipping just so that we can't move everything off of the uh, center point there. Cool, so same thing, let's use K to get our knife tool. This time I'm only going to press C, I don't need to make this cut through the mesh. Bring it to the middle, hit enter. Then with this top face we can press E to extrude and we can just drag this up. Now I don't know how far to drag this up at the moment, I've just brought it up an arbitrary amount because uh, it's going to be hard to tell how far up this needs to come until we have the bevel. What we don't want to do is we don't want to select this edge, use Control B and make a bevel here. Uh, the reason for this is this is destructive modeling. So once I hit enter here, this is now baked into our topology, right? We have to work with this. Uh, and if we wanted to remove it or change it, it becomes very, very difficult. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is pressing N to bring up the end panel. With this edge selected in the middle here, you'll notice that there's edge data. We just want to bring this bevel weight up to a value of 1. And now nothing's happened yet. Uh, you'll notice that the edge has changed to indicate that it's got a bevel weight on it, but still nothing's happening. So let's come over to our modifiers. And we'll add a new modifier. And we'll search for the bevel modifier. And you'll notice this has beveled the entire object, which we don't want. I'm just going to collapse the mirror for a second. Uh, you'll notice we have a limit method here. At the moment, it's just applying it to all the angles on the model that are... 30 degrees and above, I believe. Instead, what we want to do is the weight. And now we see it just applies to where we define that weight. I'm just going to bring up the segments to 4 here. And then you'll notice if we drag up the amount, it 
beyond a certain point, doesn't matter how much I bring it up, it just stops, right? I'm just going to reset that. Um, the reason this is happening is under the geometry panel, we have this clamp overlap. And I'll just show you what happens when we turn that off. So it lets us extend this well beyond the bounds, uh, but it can sort of lead to some strange results. So I'm just going to leave that on. I just wanted to explain why it was stopping. And I'm just going to hold down shift while I drag this just to slow down the rate of increase. And I'm just going to drag it just until I can sort of see everything stop, which here seems to be just around 1.9. Seems to work well. And now so I've got a bevel shape that I like, and it's not baked into our mesh, so we can still muck around with everything else. Now that we do have that though, I'm just going to select this top face here, and this will give me a better idea of how high up this needs to sit. So I'm just going to drag this down a bit further, and I'm just going to toggle off all of the overlays. So I'm just going to drag this down just a little bit more. Maybe like there. And I'm also just going to drag this face in on the y-axis just to thin it up a bit so it looks a little bit more like the reference image. And I think there is about good. I think in all honesty mine's probably a bit too tall, so I'm just going to go into vertex select mode here, go back into wireframe, select all these top ones, and I'm just going to drag that down just a bit. Maybe just up a smidge. As I said, I'm just eyeballing this, so there's no exact science to what I'm doing. Now I'm just going to press N again to get rid of the end panel. Now, I'm happy with the width of this and the size of the bevel. So I'm just going to go ahead with my cursor hovering over the bevel. I'm just going to press Control A just to apply it. And now you notice we have that bevel baked into our topology. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm just going to go into face select mode, select these faces, and I'm just going to delete them. And the reason we want to do this is because we need to integrate the rest of these uh, new edges into our mesh. But there is going to be a bit of a problem. So this vertice here, you notice if I select it and choose G to move it around, there's two vertices that are overlapping. And so what we can do, we can select the whole model. If we go mesh merge and by distance you notice it says removed one vertex so if we come here now press G to move it you'll notice that that the two overlapping vertices or vertexes have been dissolved uh, and now it will work nicely uh, while I'm at it I'm just going to select the entire mesh and I'm just going to get rid of the mean bevel weight because I don't need those anymore and selecting this vertice here I'm just going to use E to extrude and just drag in on the Y and because we have the clipping enabled, it will only let us drag it so far right into the middle, which is handy. Fill in the face there. And I'll just do the same for the bottom vertice. And <clears throat> then with this one here, I'm just going to use Control R, and I'm just going to make a cut at the bottom here. Fill in those faces. Fill in these faces here. Cool. So this is almost done. Uh, we've just got to figure out how to fill in this face. But there's another problem that we need to solve as well, because we need a support loop that runs around the outside here and up along the top. And at the moment, that's not going to work nicely with the way we had the topology set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little pole just over here. And the easiest way to do this is we'll use Control R to add in a loop cut along the top here. And just right click off of that. And then I'll use Control R again to cut a loop cut along uh, this part of the cylinder. I'm just going to drag it up. I'm just going to try to match the area of the um, face here with this one over here. Just, just eyeballing it. Then I'm going to select these four verts here, fill in the face. Sorry, that's not a pole, this is just basic topology, that's not... <laughs> I should get my terminology correct. Uh, I'm going to select this edge here and then hold down control and select up to here, that will just select our shortest path. So with that I'm just going to press N to bring up our end panel again and if you haven't already just go into your user preferences and what you want to do is go to your add-ons 
and just search for loop tools. And just make sure you have this uh, enabled as it's going to be a very, very important part of uh, our modeling process. So once you have that enabled, you can come over to the end panel tool, uh, sorry, uh, edit, my bad, and then you'll notice we have loop tools. So with this selected, what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and press space to space all those out and relax. If you followed any of my other tutorials, you'll know that those are my favorite two operations uh, and pretty well solve all of my modeling problems. And then in the same vein, I'm just going to select these two and I'm going to space out uh, that vertice in the middle. And then to fill out the rest of this, we can just go ahead and select this vertex, E to extrude, bring it into the Y, fill in a face, oops, and then we can fill in that final face there. Cool, so this is just about done. There is a bit of a glaring issue though, uh, and that is on the side here, you'll notice that this is all sort of uh, caved in on itself, and it does not look great by any capacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, using control, these three vertices. So you can go S, X, and zero to scale all of these along the X axes on add uh, to zero. Then just down at the bottom here, next to this magnet icon, this is our snapping menu. I'm just going to go vertex and select the uh, set the snap base to active. Sorry. Then pressing G and holding down Control, I'm just going to go to oops, sorry, G X and then Control. My bad. I'm just going to snap this out to this top vertex here. So just bring all that out, and then to fix a little bit more of this distortion here. Just going to go ahead, holding down shift, going to select all of these edges, and I'm just going to hit relax. And that should nicely clean up the uh, curvature in that section. There's also another error at the bottom here, but we'll fix that up in a moment. At the moment, I just want to fix everything else up around here. Um, so we also need another support loop on the inside here, and I'll just show you why. So if we go into our edge select mode, I'm just going to hold down Alt and then Alt and Shift to select the rest of these edges here. And then using Shift E, I'm going to go 0.55, and that's just put a crease onto these edges here. Tabbing out of edit mode, I'm going to go ahead and under Object, uh, we'll just go Shade Smooth. And then we're going to add another modifier, which is a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm just going to bring the levels and render up to four. And you'll notice this has made the bottom all weird, so I'm just going to delete the face at the bottom there. Now, the reason this is problematic, it's probably a bit hard to see with this matte cap, so I'll just give something a little bit harsher. You notice all these pinching artifacts along the edge here? We shouldn't have those. We should have a nice consistent uh, edge that runs along all of this. Uh, and you'll also notice that we get a very inconsistent crease along this section here. So to fix that, I'm just going to go back into the other matte caps, just a bit easy on the eyes. Uh, I'm going to select this face here, hold down control and select up to this face here just to grab all of these. I'm going to press I to do an inset. And then we're going to press B to do the inset along the boundary. So you'll just notice what that's doing is that it's merging all of the uh, vertexes or vertices at the center point uh, and just letting us push this along uh, those leading edges. So I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit. I'm just pretty much trying to match up the same length as on the outside. So that's probably a little bit too shallow. So I might just bring that in a little bit further like that. Now, before we go and do anything else, you'll notice we've got this inset faces panel down here. What we want to do is we just want to check edge rail. And for some reason, I don't know why this happens with insets, but if I uncheck it, you'll notice it sort of skews everything off a little bit. But when I check it, it goes all nicely. I don't fully understand. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but just check edge rail for this instance because it does improve everything. Uh, and with all this still selected, I'm just going to go Shift E and negative one to get rid of those uh, creased edges. Go to Edge Select, select these top two edges here, Shift E 0.55. And this is almost done. 
So looks pretty good. The only problem is we've just got a close bunching of edges and it's actually kind of hard to see here. I thought it would show up a little bit better. Maybe with this one I can show it to you. Yeah, it's probably still a bit subtle, but you might just be able to see that down here and down here, there's just a bit of a divot in the middle of the cylinder, which we don't really want because cylinders don't have that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to apply the mirror modifier. I'm going to hold down Alt and select this bottom uh, set of edges here. And just using loop tools, I'm going to go circle. And one thing I don't like about doing this is that it's now skewed the position of um, these vertices here, that one as well, and this one, which sort of define like where the center point of our mesh is. So what I'm going to do is just a quick remedy to it. It's probably not that important in all honesty. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to select the same three quarters as we did earlier. I'm just going to delete those faces, add in a mirror modifier, X and Y clipping. And you'll notice this looks all weird. We just need to drag the mirror modifier to be above the subdivision surface. Tabbing back into edit mode. I'm just going to grab this vertex down here and move it along the Y until it snaps into place. And same with this one, I'm just going to pull it back along the X. And then just selecting between these points, I'm just going to go space and relax. Actually, you probably don't even need to relax, just space will be fine. So, look, that's probably a little bit unnecessary. We probably just could have spaced it from the start. I just like to get more of a circular profile back to it. And then we can come back to the mirror modifier and we can press Control A to apply it. And then at the bottom here, going into Edge Select, we can hold it down Alt to select all these bottom edges, F to fill in a face, and then we can press I to do an insert, just bring that face in, and then I'll just do another one in the middle. Then we can use Alt and select the outside edge here, Shift E, 0.55. And I think for these top ones here, it's just a little bit too sharp for my liking. So I'm just going to shift a negative one, shift a point three three, and that looks pretty nice. I think that's <clears throat> pretty close to the original reference, and we've got nice shading across everything. But just one more thing before I do wrap this up. So personally, I'd be happy to leave um, these big end gons here. It's not that big of a concern to me. Uh, but what we can do, and I probably should have explained this while we still had the mirror modifier on because it would have made it just a little bit quicker. Uh, but what we can do is just using the knife tool, we can just go ahead and we can cut uh, edges across these parts here, just if you wanted to uh, end up with a completely quad-based mesh. This is how you would do it. And I'm just going to use J on that one there. So there you go, that quads up the entire thing. And then if you're anything like me uh, and want all of your topology to appear nicely, we could go ahead oops, and select all of these. I'm just alternating between pressing Shift and then holding Control to select between these points. Let's go ahead and space all of those. And now everything on our model looks very very nice and actually you've just noticed we can probably just add in a loop at the bottom here so just add in a loop uh, g g e f and just drag that down to the bottom just to sharpen that up i hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the first episode of this little tutorial series i've tried to slow everything down uh, not use all my shortcut panels and everything and try to use everything as it is in Built to Blender to make this more beginner friendly for everybody. Um, but yes, I, I hope that this is suitable for a beginner's audience to follow along with. Uh, but if there are any objects that you would like to learn how to model, feel free to check them down in the comments or join the Discord and let me know over there and I will be more than happy to try to add them in uh, if possible.